Hi, we're here today to take a look at this Yamaha M80. The Yamaha M80 dates from around 1985 and it was a flagship amplifier with 225 watts of power. It was mated with a C80 preamp and this one uh, was damaged in shipping and the binding posts were broke away. Now that's pretty common with this amplifier and that they're mounted in plastic and after some time with age the plastic gets brittle because of the heat and can be damaged easily. So let's take a look at what's wrong with it. So this is pretty common with this M80 amplifier. The Binding posts were mounted on plastic and there's a lot of heat generated by this amplifier and uh, the plastic gets brittle and uh, they tend to break away. This one is, is probably been bumped and, and uh, it pretty much needs to be uh, fixed. So I'm going to create a plate to sit behind it and mount new upgraded binding posts on the back. I'm going to remove all the screws. I've already removed some of them out of the back. And then we're going to drop this back panel off and you'll be able to see the damaged parts really well. Okay, I've removed all the screws and I'm taking off the back panel so I can show you the damaged parts. The back panel is still attached. Uh, so we'll just set this aside for right now. As you can see, all this plastic is broken. This is the only one that has one of the existing screw holes that's still visible where this is bolted to the back panel. These, these are all damaged beyond repair. Okay, so I've got a, a scrap sheet of Acrylite uh, quarter-inch acrylic sheet and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to measure the area in the back where the binding posts are going to be mounted. I'm going to cut it and I'm going to drill it to be mounted to this back plate. So I'm going to need a piece that's uh, approximately two and a quarter inches by, uh, let's go there, about eight inches. Acrylite acrylic sheet is very easy to cut with a table saw. So I'm going to line up my cuts. Now we're going to check the piece that we cut for fit and lay out the holes to be drilled.
The binding posts that I purchased are not quite long enough to be mounted on the back panel and reach the circuit board behind, so I'm going to have to extend these a little with some copper wire so that I can attach it to the circuit board and have it on the flat surface of the back panel. Here's the plate that we drilled to mount the binding posts. We have to add a length of wire to the back for to, to attach it to the circuit board as I showed earlier. Here I've pre-cut some pieces of wire and we need to attach them to the back of the binding post. Well if you bend this around the binding post and solder it, the nut will not come off the binding post. To accomplish this, I've created some brass ferrules that are about the size of the shaft of the binding post and the copper wire. To accomplish this I have to grind the edge of the binding post down so that the ferrule fits on it and then we can slide the two pieces together and solder it. I'm just carefully taking the very end of this off so that it's all one diameter. I'm going to check this to make sure that I didn't damage the threads and it goes on nicely. I've now fitted this, ground it around so that the ferrule fits on there. I'm pre-tinning this piece of copper wire just to get some solder and some resin on it. Now I'm gonna put the ferrule on there and get it to seat. Now I'll fill it with solder So I'm going to clean up the XF solder here a little bit and it'll be ready to go after I do a little uh, wire wheel brushing with it. And here's the finished product ready to be installed. With a flat washer. a lock washer, and the nut. And we'll just snug this up with this wrench. And only 11 more to go. Before I mounted the plastic plate to the back panel, I covered it with some 3M sign material to make, make it black so that it would match the black panel. I'm just finishing up putting the last of the binding posts with the extra attachments on it. Backing piece. The lock washer and the nut. Snugging it just a little bit so that I can align it. I've made a little tool which will align the binding posts for 
proper orientation. I put this in, I tighten it a little bit so it doesn't move, and then I'm going to take the nut driver and secure the binding post. Now we're ready to solder. I'm soldering this binding post. I'm making a making sure everything's warm enough for the solder to flow. I have successfully put the extended binding post connections through the circuit board as seen here. Now I'm going to solder. the. These are the last connections to solder. I will solder them, clip them off flush, and then we can start final assembly. I've cleaned the green protective covering off of the places where I brought the binding post extensions in. I'm clipping off the excess so that everything is flush mounted to the board and we're done with the modifications. It's time to reassemble it. Well this project we've taken all these broken binding posts and installed new binding posts that are a lot more stable than these uh, on a plastic guide that I built and bolted to the back of the back panel. It's now time to assemble it all back together and see if it works. So I'm finishing up putting this panel, this back panel on, and then I'm gonna lay it down and and fire it up. I'm not even gonna put the top on because if something bursts into flames, I wanna watch it. Well, I've brought it over here to my test bench. I'm gonna bring this thing up slowly on a variable power supply, and we'll watch the voltage rise and the current draw. I've put a couple of speakers on A, uh, port A on this thing, just to load it up so that it has some something on there to play. I'm going to turn the power switch on and start to bring her up. It's at about half voltage right now, 60 volts. No smoke, must be doing something right. It's lit, it's ready. Words. 